All right, family, welcome, welcome, welcome to another day of Read Rich and Righteous. We're reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets and Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. Um, we've been on this journey for about two months now. It's been absolutely amazing to be with you all. Um, we have about 600 people joining us every morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, to go on this journey, to make sure that we uh, are pouring into ourselves first before we go out into the day, make sure that we keep our mindset attuned to abundance and we don't tap into the collective consciousness, which is pushing scarcity, pushing the word recession, and that we make sure that our personal economy is still thriving, even when the collective consciousness in the collective economy may be struggling at this moment in time. Uh, this is the money mindset that I use to navigate my journey to abundance. Um, when I quit my job January 9th, 2009, at the bottom of the last recession, and this is why I believe that God nudged me two months ago to just read my book out loud. This book was divinely downloaded to me. Um, to me and through me at the beginning of COVID because uh, the world was going to slip into scarcity consciousness at that moment in time. Had the government not poured money and printed money um, and given it freely to the people, um, COVID could have been a very dark, dark space for us. Um, and so uh, I am making sure that this money mindset is in you, right? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, not the renewing of your bank account. It is a renewing of your mind. And when you know that you are tapped into a source that never runs out, which is God, then as we navigate this external environment, as we navigate this experience on, uh, of life called earth, um, uh, we know that we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about, right? And so um, we are continuing our journey today. Uh, we are on page 218, and we are reading the section called the cash flow framework. The cash flow framework is how I automate my wealth. It is how I automate my wealth. It is how money flows to me and through me um, when it when it comes. And um, today's chapter is a little bit more technical than um, our other chapters. In fact, we are going to be going through the cash flow framework. And so for those of you who don't have the book, you uh, you won't be able to uh, see this. Um, I'm, I will likely post it in the Facebook group. I'll post it in the Facebook group, um, but we're going to be going through this step by step today, which is the cash flow framework. Uh, this is exactly how my money is set up so that, that when I earn money, what happens automatically so that I can continue to create wealth. Um, and it is a series of bank accounts that needs to be set up um, in order to do that. And it takes some time to get it set up, um, but uh, it costs you nothing to create a bank account. Um, most bank accounts only have like a $100 uh, deposit um, requirement. Um, and then maybe $500 in order to uh, avoid any monthly uh, service charges. So um, I'm going to walk through this. And again, today's chapter is a little bit more technical, but we have to get um, we have to bring organization to our money as good stewards of money. We have to bring organization to our money and how it flows. We have to tell it what to do. OK, and that we know that from yesterday's chapter, we are not just going. We are the bank and that we're not just going to allow money to sit there and do nothing. We have to have commands for it as stewards and as leaders of these dead presidents. We have to tell it what to do, where to go. Right. And so this is what we're going to be walking through today, which is the cash flow framework. So, again, we are on page 218. If you don't have the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com, moneyandmanifestation.com. Uh, that link is pinned at the top of Instagram and uh, uh, Instagram and YouTube. So you can go get the book uh, right now. When you buy the book, if you go to Amazon, the book will cost you one hundred dollars for one copy. OK, but if you go to money I'm going to give you five copies. OK, five copies plus the rituals workbook, which allow you to anchor uh, these practices into your life. And then the audio book. The reason I give you five copies is one is for you. Four is for you to give to other people. We are here to stimulate your personal economy and the way you stimulate your personal economy is by giving. Right. Scripture says, as you give, so you shall receive. So the reason you aren't all receiving as much as you desire is because you're not giving that much. Okay. So your receiving will always be proportional to your giving. The only reason Bill Gates, regardless of his motives and his intentions, the only real reason Bill Gates is as wealthy as he is, is because he gave a lot. He solved a huge problem in the world, right? And because of the size of the problem that he solved, he got rewarded abundantly for that. Remember, these universal laws are non-judgmental. They don't care if you use them for bad. They don't care if you use them for good. They are non-judgmental. And what has happened is, is that those with ill intentions have gotten a greater grasp of these universal laws than us who, uh, who are righteous, us who are selfless, us who are here to serve, us who are here to do as much good as possible, right? So that's what I mean by righteous, those who are um, here to not only win for themselves, but create a win-win for themselves and others. And so 
we have to grasp and understand and master these laws in the same way that others have. Um, and that's what I'm here to do is to make the righteous rich. And in any in, in some instances, if I can make those who are already rich righteous, uh, then that is also a win for the family. Uh, I'm on a path to create the wealthiest family in the world. Um, and what that means is that I'm looking to help 100,000 people. Okay, reach a million dollars net worth would be which would be a hundred billion dollars today a hundred billion dollars will make us the fifth wealthiest family in the world as of today and so this is going to be a 30 to 50 year journey i don't know how long god has in store for me on this earth but um if i'm looking at a range of 30 to 30 to 50 years that is what my commitment is and i do that through the multi-family movement we just had our great conference called the generational wealth conference we celebrated over 300 people closing on multi-family real estate all across the country um and then and then uh, we do that through uh, Read Rich and Righteous, right? And then we're also doing that through 100 Dope Men and 100 Dope Women so that uh, we, as the rich and righteous, can find each other and marry each other um, and build families together because indivi wealthy individuals don't run the world. It is actually wealthy families who run the world. So um, we are continuing our journey here uh, on page 218, and we're reading the cash flow framework. And um, again, this chapter is more technical. It's more technical, right? And this is what we're going through. Um, walking you step by step through this cash flow framework today. All right. So um, with that, uh, let's get started. All right. Um, if Instagram crashes, please join us on YouTube. If YouTube crashes, please join us on Instagram. All right. And please um, uh, go ahead and like and share this video right now. The only way to break, I did get shadow banned um, last week. It looks like my post might be, um, that shadow ban might be over. But the only way to break free from these algorithms is through human beings. The only way to break through these algorithms and this uh, artificial intelligence is back to human consciousness. So if this space, if this time and space that we have here in Read and Rich and Righteous has been blessing you, then please like and share uh, this video right here and right now. That's all I ask of you. That's all I ask of you. I'm not, I'm not asking for anything from you. This space is 100% free. I'm showing up with for you every single day for 45 minutes to an hour uh, because um, out of obedience, because I was told to, right? Um, because spirit moved me to. And so um, all I'm asking for you is to hit that like and that share button so that we can get this consciousness out to as many people as possible. The way we expand our family, the way we become the richest family in the world is through the expansion of consciousness. Other families have to expand through birth, through marriage, and through the growth of their business. We can actually expand in numbers because we share values and we share a singular vision. And if we all collectively buy into that singular vision of making the righteous rich, um, then I know that we can get there faster. And so that's all I really need from you is one, um, when you're here, if you can like and share this video uh, while you're here and all that requires is the, the click of a finger, right? Um, and then uh, the next level is obviously uh, buying the book. Um, but again, I'm not just here about I'm not just here to be a bestseller. It's not about getting the book in your hands. It's about getting the book in your head and in your heart. Right. So then not only buying the book, but also being here and listening and going through the book as I read it or reading it on your own. Right. And then from there, giving the other four books to other people so that we can expand this consciousness. All right. So uh, with that, we were are uh, we're going to go. Yeah, there's 277 people on YouTube right now. There's 150 likes. So don't be out here lurking. All right. Don't be out here just lurking. Um, all I'm asking is that you hit that like button and that share button. All right. Same for Instagram. So we're going to start on page 218 right now. Again, today, um, today's uh, reading is a little bit more technical. So listen very carefully. And um, and um, everybody, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this right now, because this is what we're ultimately executing. I'll, I'll put an image of it in the Facebook group, but go ahead and take uh a screenshot of this right now all right um instagram i'll hold it up for you all instagram go ahead and take a screenshot five four three two one all right youtube five four three two one all right cool let's get into it the cash flow framework this is how i automate my wealth this is how i set up my bank accounts and my money to automate my wealth okay there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer steward. That's Luke 16, one, one through two. And so this steward, uh, this rich man had uh, given um, somebody 
his resources to um, be a steward of, and he had wasted the goods and could not account for them when the rich man came back. And so uh, in many cases, this is what happens to us as children of God. We've been blessed with abundance, but then when we have to account for our stewardship, when we have to account for all of the life force energy, we're right. Because remember, the greatest currency, the greatest currency in the world is where, family? The greatest currency in the world is where? It's not here. This is not the greatest currency in the world. What is the, it's not even a multifamily home. Where is the greatest currency in the world? Where is the greatest currency? The currency, the greatest currency in the world is the energy that is within your body temple. That is the greatest currency in the world. And what we're doing right now is many of us, as we talked about yesterday, are selling the greatest currency in the world at wholesale prices, right? To employers that are not aligned with our vision or not aligned with the heaven on earth that we want to bring forth. So we, so that's the first currency that many of us are mismanaging, our time and the energy that's in our body. The second currency that many of us are mismanaging is this one. Because if I had you add up all the money that you've made in your lifetime, and I ask you, where is it? Most of you could not account for it. If I say you've been working since you graduated from college uh, at the age of 22, you've been working for 20 years right now. And over the past 20 years, right? You were making on average $50,000 a year. That's $1 million, family. That's $1 million. 20 years at $50,000 a year, that's $1 million. And then we go look at your bank account. Where is it? Where is it? And many of you could not give an answer to where it went. You could say taxes, student loans, et cetera. But even after we take away 20% taxes, even after we take away your 100K in student loans, right? There's still 700 left. Where is it, family? So you want more from the creator. I haven't even started reading, y'all. You want more from the infinite source, but you haven't even been a good steward of what you already have. So why would the creator give you more? Why would the creator give you more if you can't even account for that which you already had? You couldn't even account for the little that you had. So what's you, what do you think is going to happen when you have to account for more? Some of us think that having more is going to make it easier. Some of us think that having more is going to make it easier. No, having more actually makes it messier in many cases. I have to spend a lot of thought energy figuring out how to manage all my money, all the different assets that I have. It actually becomes more expansive. It's actually harder to manage more than it is to manage less. It's harder to manage more than it is to manage less. If you are a babysitter and you have one kid to manage, that's pretty easy. But if you have six kids to look after in a moment, that becomes harder. So I need you to Release this idea that, oh, just me getting more. Just give me more and I'll be better off. No. You have to be great at managing the one that you have. And once you demonstrate that you can handle one, then you shall be given more. God is looking for stewards. God is looking for great stewards to give more resources to, to do its work on, here on earth. But if you have not demonstrated that you are a good steward of that which you have, then this is part of the reason why you're not receiving more. All right, so let's get into it, page 218. There is a systematic way that cash should flow to you and through you. And I put it together for you in what I call the cash flow framework. The goal is to keep money in circulation, just like oxygen stays in constant circulation. So remember, we made the correlation that wealth consciousness, you have achieved wealth consciousness when you relate to money in the same way you relate to oxygen, okay? None of us woke up today worrying about where the uh, where our next breath was going to come from. Even if there was a marathon running outside, even if a thousand people were running a marathon outside our window this morning, we still did not worry about where our oxygen or where our breath was coming from. So wealth consciousness is when you relate to money in the same way you relate to oxygen. And when you think about oxygen, oxygen is always in constant flow. And oxygen never just stops and still, okay? This is why we talked about you being a bank but you not being, a, we're not here to save money. We're here to, in temporary cases, store money. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to circulate that money. This system's ultimate goal is financial freedom. Financially, that is when your passive income is greater than your monthly living expenses. Spiritually, that is when you are free from having to think about money and no longer, and it no longer dictates your daily decisions, allowing you to keep your focus on God. Okay. 
The goal is to keep our focus on God. Where the scripture where Jesus overturns the tables, and we discussed this already, is an allegory to say that my temple is not meant to be focused on changing money. My thoughts are not meant to go towards money, 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 money. How do I make more money? How do I pay these bills? How do I make more money? How do I pay these bills? But that my father's house is a house of prayer, that we are supposed to be in constant prayer without ceasing. That is what our, we're supposed to be attuned here. That is where our mind is supposed to be. We're supposed to be trying to stay in alignment. That is really our only job every single day is to try to stay in alignment. But when we allow this to dictate our decisions, then we start focusing on this and our temple becomes full of money changers. And this is why Jesus overturned the tables. It was an allegory. It was an allegory that our mind, our temple is not supposed to be focused on money, 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 money. This is why 13 of the 39 parables are about money, because however this book, however the Bible was written and whoever wrote the Bible knew how pervasive this thing could be if we did not master it. OK, we are supposed to master money. It is not be, supposed to be a master of us. Right. We're not supposed to serve this, but many people do. Probably about 95% of the people in the world serve this and not God. Okay? Paragraph 2, page 218. Please like and share this video. Um, please like and share this video. We have 342 people on YouTube and 195 uh, likes. So at the very least, please like this video. Um, page 218, second paragraph. Before we get to that point, we have to ensure that our financial foundation is set up for maximum success. I want to show you how I automate my wealth through a series of accounts at a few banks. Okay, It's a series of accounts at a few banks. The only reason we are using banks is for safety and security um, until we have identified the best ways to give the cash consciousness. So when the money is in the bank, it is a, it is a dead, right? This is why it's called dead presidents. When the money is in the bank, it is dead. Okay, So we're only holding this money temporarily. We're only holding this energy temporarily in banks for safety and security until we can resurrect these dead presidents and actually give them con consciousness. You can replace some of the banks with assets that I outlined in the value holder hierarchy in the last chapter as well. Follow the system and steps below to begin circulating money through your personal economy the right way. Okay. So again, for those of you who came in late, we're going through the cash flow framework. Okay. This is what I'm about to walk you through step by step by step. Instagram, this is what it looks like. I know some of you said it's reversed on Instagram. Um, there's nothing I can do about that right now. What I will do is I will post it in, I'll post an image of it in the Facebook group after. So let me give you the Facebook group URL. The Facebook group URL is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rich and righteous. OK, so go join the Facebook group. I'll admit you. Um, I'll admit you and uh, I'll post the image of the cash flow framework there for those of you who don't have the book. But I do encourage you to go get the book because um, you miss out on some things like this when you're just listening in. OK, Instagram, I know you can't click away um, while you're watching a live. So, uh, again, that's face. Go to any Facebook group that you are in when you get off or if you have a desktop, go to any Facebook group, take off the ending and put rich and righteous as the ending, and that will take you to the Facebook group, okay? We're on page 220 now, all right? Step zero, your cash pot is your current checking and savings account. That's the first step. Your cash pot is your current checking and savings account. Um, savings account. This is step zero because it already exists. We will call this accessible bank number one. This is where most people's personal financial system ends. All their money sits in one account, not working for them, earning minimal interest. This is meant to be a receiving pot for inflows of money, which will then be allocated to other accounts automatically. The problem with having all of your money just sitting in one account is that if we see it, we spend it, right? And when we spend money, we end money, right? It is just like when there is food in the refrigerator. Hey, y'all ever been home, right? And there's food in the refrigerator. Even if you're not hungry, just because it's there, what do you do? Even if you're not hungry, right? What do you do when there's food in the refrigerator? You start nibbling. You start eating, right? You start eating. Your checking and savings account should never be at the same bank so that you can't see both when uh, so that you can't see both when logging in online or on your phone. The goal is to transmute our money into something more valuable as soon as possible or keep it out of sight and therefore out of mind if we need to hold it temporarily until we find a good investment. Okay? So in the same way 
that if there's food, you're not even hungry, but there's food in the refrigerator on the counter. I'm looking at the kitchen right now. There's food there. We start nibbling. And the same thing happens for our money. If we log in and we see money there, we say, oh, I got some money. I can buy this. That's okay. I got 20000 there. I can buy this. We start nibbling away at our money because we can see it. So some of you, knowing yourself, have to move your money out of sight so that it's out of mind. Okay? Step number one. We're on page 220. Step number one. Again, today's chapter is a little bit more technical than, um, than other chapters because this is critical to organizing and being a great steward of money. Step one. The next account is your living or operating expenses. It is also a checking account at Accessible Bank number one because you need access to this money throughout the month to live. This account should get a direct deposit from your cash pot bi-weekly or monthly according to your monthly budget. Here, we keep two months of living expenses. Two months of living expenses, okay? In the, um, your living and operating expenses. We keep two months of living expenses. If your mortgage, car notes, gas, student loans, kids' education, food, insurances, internet, and entertainment budget is $3,000 per month, then $6,000 should be in this account. Every month, it will fluctuate from $6,000 to $3,000 as money goes in and comes out like oxygen in your lungs, since this is what you live off of. All of your monthly bills should be paid with credit cards first to protect you as a consumer. Build your credit and earn points. Did you hear that? All of your monthly bills, family, stop using a debit card. Stop using a debit card. All of your monthly bills should be paid with credit cards first to protect you as a consumer, build your credit, and earn points. And those credit cards should be paid off automatically from this account on a specific day of every, uh, of every month, okay? A specific day of every month, all right? A specific day of every month, all right? This will keep you from going over your monthly budget. The extra $3,000 is just backup in case a one-time life event occurs that throws your monthly budget off a little. We never want to pay unnecessary overdraft fees to the bank, but we want to leave as little money as possible with them, okay? We never want to pay unnecessary overdraft fees to the bank, but we want to leave as little money as possible with them, okay? Now we're on page 221. We're reading step two. The next account is your sacred stash. Remember yesterday we talked about the difference between saving money and storing money. Saving money is really fear-based. Storing money means that I have, I'm have i storing it for future use, okay? So this is the sacred stash. This is a temporary savings account at inaccessible bank number one. Not accessible bank. This is not a Bank of America or Chase or Wells Fargo where you see ATMs on every corner. This is a, a savings account at an inaccessible bank number one, okay? We don't want to see this money. We are stashing money away there for future investments. The goal is to invest this money, not earn interest from the bank. That is not the goal. At least 10% of all receivables that go into your cash pot should go into this account no matter what. This is how you tithe or give 10% to yourself first. The reason many of us are broke is because you've been tithing to the wrong temple. You've been tithing to the wrong temple. See, when you take the Bible literally, you think that you need to tithe to your church building for their building fund that they never built. Your church is now on Zoom. What building fund is there? What are you tithing to? You're supposed to be tithing to your temple first. This is the temple you were supposed to be tithing to the entire time. You tie to the church and then all of a sudden you're in a financially precarious situation. You go ask them for money and, and all of a sudden they don't have money. Wait a second. I've been tithing to you for 10 years. I've given you over $150,000 over 10 years. And I can't get some help on my rent this month. I can't get help on my rent this month. I just hit a wall, but I've been good to you. I've been faithful to you, this false church for 10 years. And now I need some help and you don't have any, I thought that that was what it was for. I thought it was to do good. You've been tied into the wrong temple. Stop your direct deposit to them immediately. Now, I'm not saying don't give. If your church is actually giving you a return on your investment, if your church is pouring into you, continue to give. 
but you've been tied into the wrong church. The first church that you need to tie to is your temple up here, to your mind, to yourself, to your family, to your last name. And I can back that up. I can go through scripture and show you that there are no more Levites here. Tithes were for the Levites because they did not get any land allocated to them. There are no more Levites left, family. There are no more Levites to tithe to. And tithes were not of money. Tithes were of, uh, tithes were of food and animals. Tithes were of food, crops, and animals. It was not of money. They weren't asking you for 10% of your income. It was, it was tithing of your, your livestock and your crop. And there's no more Levites to tithe to. So if you want to walk through the scripture, I can walk you through the scripture. In fact, I've done it. It's already on YouTube. Go look it up. Stop being deceived, family. Stop being deceived. Now, again, I celebrate abundance in all forms. Do I believe that spiritual leaders should be blessed? Yes, as long as they're, if they're truly doing God's work, they should be blessed. I don't care if your preacher rolls up in a Rolls Royce. That's fine. I believe that those people should be blessed. I wish Martin Luther King had a Rolls Royce. He deserved it. I wish Malcolm X had a Rolls Royce. He deserved it. He deserved to live in luxury. They should have been being able to ride to wherever they were going in chariots because of the work that they were doing. But if you are following a false prophet, then be careful. I believe that Mal Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, I have, what is it, MLK Day, I wish he was a multimillionaire. I wish a mind and a man like that was a multimillionaire. I wish he had the house of his dream. I wish he never had to worry about money, him and his family. I wish, that's, that's, that's the narrative that we have to change, that we have to get rid of this idea of this sacrificial leader who's just sacrificing everything for the community but is living in squalor. Who has to worry about how he's going to put food on the table for his or her family? We have to release that imagery and that identity of this sacrificial leader who has nothing. No, the very people who are leading our community, they should be blessed and have abundance. That's what we need to change around. And then guess what? Now we incentivize the youth to say, yeah, this person is doing good in God's work. And look at what they are, what look at what they have received as a result of the great and godly work that they are doing. But when the kids now see that the people who are doing the good in God's work in our community ain't got ish. You think the kids want to aspire to be that when they see that the people who are actually doing the work, who are in the trenches doing, bringing heaven on earth, don't have anything and are struggling financially. You think the kids want to aspire to be that? So take that money that you've been tithing to that stadium, to that stadium that you go to church in. Jesus didn't have no stadium. He said, go sit on the grass outside. Go sit on the grass outside. We don't need no stadium. The church is not a building. Why do we have a stadium? Why does it look like uh, why does it look like a football game in here? Why does it look like I'm going to an NBA game in here? What for? What for? Waste. Poor stewardship. That is poor stewardship right there in your eyes. And many of us can't even see it. We are on page 221. I don't even know where I was, family. <laughs> I'd be going off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Send this to your preacher. See what he says. Step two. The next account is your sacred stash. This is what temporary. What a, this is a temporary savings account at an inaccessible bank. Number one, we don't want to see this money. We are stashing money away there for future investments. The goal is to invest this money, not earn interest from the bank. At least ten percent of all receivables that go into your cash pot should go into this account, no matter what. This is how you tithe or give ten percent to yourself first. This is where we left off. <laughs> this is where we left off. And all I have is a Zoom account. We have in church every day right now. All I have is a Zoom account and a laptop and some internet. That's all I needed to have what? We just reached our record. We we had 646 people today. 646 people today. No stadium. No stadium. No Megatron. No uh no singers, no musicians, none of that. Zero. 
no ushers, no, none of that. All we have is a Zoom account, some internet, a laptop, and an iPhone. That's all we needed. We have church every day. I haven't asked you for a dime. I've not asked you for a dime. I don't take any offerings. If your income is fluctuating, then this has to be done manually every month since banks only allow you to automate a certain amount rather than a percentage of what comes in. If it is consistent, then the direct deposit can be automated. In addition, any true profit after your emergency fund is filled, uh, is filled, excuse me, any true profit after your emergency fund is filled also goes into this account. And any 50-50 match from a fund fund expense goes into this account too. As this account fills, we are actively looking for ways to give this cash consciousness through the right deal and right timing. So again, 10% of anything that comes in, 10% of any money, this money comes in today, 10% of this is going into the sacred stash, okay? After our emergency fund is filled, okay? And then in addition to that, we have a 50-50, I think we're gonna get to the fund, yeah, we're gonna get to the fund fund, the fund fund in just a second, okay? Now we're on step three. Now we wanna look at our primary revenue stream number one. Your primary stream will likely be your after-tax salary. We want to always explore ways to increase that. If you have a job, your options include asking for a raise, finding a higher paying job, working overtime, and increasing your sales commission. If you have a business, your options include getting new customers, increasing prices, upselling existing customers, and increasing customer retention. Everybody here who has a job, Everybody here who has a job and you've been there for over a year, this week I need you to go ask for a raise. Everybody who has a job this week, I need you to go ask for a raise. Just go ask because a closed mouth don't get fed. Remember, if you have a job and they're paying you $100,000, guess what? They're probably making $250,000 off of you. That's the only way that they could sustainably employ people is they have to be making more money off of you than they pay you. So if you have actually been creating real value for that organization, I encourage you to go ask for a raise. Just go ask for a raise. What is the worst they can do? They can say no. Okay. You said no. That's fine. I'll keep looking for employment elsewhere or I'm going to step into my God-given purpose and not be on this job anymore. Okay. That's, just go ask. That's probably the easiest way to make more money. Is to simply go ask for a raise. Some of y'all haven't asked for a raise in a minute. Okay, you wait on them to give you a raise. No, you say, "Look, I've created some extreme value. This this project here led to this. This project here led to this. I recently did this. Um, I, I want to ask for a raise." Step four, page uh, two twenty one. The next account is your emergency fund. This is a savings account at inaccessible bank number three. This can be anywhere from three to twelve months of living expenses, depending on your risk tolerance. If your living expenses are $3,000 per month and you believe in your ability to bounce back from any financial curveball, like the loss of a job in three months, you only need $9,000. That's three months times $3,000 per month. If you are more risk averse and need 12 months, that would be $36,000, 12 months times 3,000, okay? In your emergency fund, which means it will take longer for you to fill your emergency fund and thus longer to start investing. Everything that comes into your cash pot minus your living expenses, minus the 10% uh, to your sacred stash should go towards filling your emergency fund to the level you desire, okay? The equation is your salary minus your living expenses minus your 10% sacred stash contribution equals your true profit. So I'm going to show you that. The equation of for your true profit is your salary, right, after your, tax, your after tax salary, okay, minus your living expenses, minus your 10% sacred stash contribution, that is what your true profit is every single month, okay? So if your after-tax salary is $5,000, then your true profit is 5,000 minus 3,000, which is your monthly living expenses, minus 10% times 5,000, which is 500, and that leaves you with $1,500 in true profit. The emergency fund is pure cash that we, will, we are willing to let sit. This is only cash. This is uh. This is only cash. We are. This is the only cash 
This is the only cash we are happy to allow the bigger bank to hold, okay? The value to us is the liquidity and lack of volatility if uh, an emergency happens. But the cost is inflation and the opportunity cost from not investing in higher yielding assets. You can explore the value holder hierarchy for other ways to hold your emergency fund. My favorite way to hold money is a maximum cash value whole life insurance policy that I can borrow against tax-free and without penalty while also having a death benefit attached to it. So I saw Marvin pull up here, uh, Marvin Mitchell pull up here um, on Instagram, and that's what he specializes in. Also, my brother, Jake Taylor Jacobs, who uh, was on stage at Generational Wealth Conference, he also specializes in that kind of uh, policy, okay? That policy is a very specifically structured policy, um, and you must understand what you are doing in order to get the true value of it. Otherwise, it will be a waste. So you have to understand how it works and how to use it. OK, step number five, we're on page 222. Once your emergency fund is full, you can increase your contribution to your sacred stash from 10 percent on up. And you can start sending uh, you can start sending any remaining true profit to your fun fund. Your sacred stash is for investment. Your fun fund is for enjoyment. OK, I'm not just saying save money, uh, not store money and invest everything that you have, right? And and don't take any vacations for the rest of your life and just make sure everything is straight for the next generation. I'm not saying that, family. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is there, that there's a fun fund as well. I've accounted for that. We are, we are experiencing heaven on earth right here and right now. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, we came up with an acronym. We, we about to change the definition of whole season, Okay. We hoeing out here. Why? Because we heaven on earth and out here. Heaven, H on O E earth. We are heaven on earth and out here. This is my whole season. I'm in full perfect alignment with God. Not my whole season uh, sexually. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about whole season physically. We're talking about a whole season spiritually. I am spiritually aligned. I'm in my bag spiritually. I'm in my whole season, family. I'm in heaven on earth right here and right now. Because that's what Luke 17, 21 says. It said, is it, in, it is here and now. It is in your midst. I'm in my whole season. I'm in alignment right now. Okay? Those who are in their sexual whole season, I ain't seen that work. I ain't seen that lead to too many good fruits. It might lead to some kids. And kids are a beautiful thing. It might lead to some heartbreak. Not as beautiful. What are you really seeking? In your physical and sexual host season, what are you really seeking? You seeking sexual freedom? You seeking sexual liberation? What is it that you're truly seeking? What is it that you're truly seeking, family? Because there's a there's a host season that is on a higher level than that. It's called heaven on earth, where your heaven, which is your greatest, the greatest good you can see for yourself and others, is actually matching and directly correlated and corresponding to your material experience on earth, where your heaven and earth are 100% aligned. There's something better than just giving your body and using your body and having a physical stimulation. Have you ever been stimulated spiritually? Have you ever been stimulated spiritually? You ever had a spiritual orgasm? One that overwhelms you so much that you cry because of how good God is? You ever had that? You ever had that? That's what I encourage you to seek because the flesh and the body is temporary and you're not the body anyways. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. There's a higher level of satisfaction. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do both. I'm not saying you can't be, what common say, just because I'm intellectual don't mean I can't be sexual. You can do both, but just make sure you have your priorities straight. Just make sure you have your priorities straight, family. Church demonized sex, yet that's the portal that all of us came through, okay? Promiscuity, okay, I understand that. Promiscuity, I understand that. But sex, that's not bad. How are you going to demonize the, 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 the route that you came through this earth? How are you going to demonize the route that you came into this world through? <laughs> weird, just weird, family. And we just follow along, okay. Do, 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 do. All right, where are we? Okay, yes. So your sacred stash is for investment. 
Your fun fun is for enjoyment. We must balance living in the present while preparing for the future. Your fun fun is also a savings account at inaccessible bank number two with your sacred stash. The reason why is that anytime you spend money on something from your fun fun, that expense or liability must be matched by an equal contribution to your sacred stash. If you spend $1,000 on a new couch set from your fun, uh, from your fun fund, you must also contribute $1,000 to your sacred stash. Okay. So here's how, here's how we eat now and enjoy right now. Okay. So you have $2,000 or you have a hundred dollars. You want to spend a hundred dollars. I say to you, no, don't spend a hundred dollars. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to be able to use and enjoy $50. Right. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the other 50 and we're going to plant a seed that will ultimately replenish that $50 that you just used. Okay. Do you understand that? So we're going to take $50 of this from, for our fun fund. And we're going to go enjoy that $50 right now, do whatever you want with it. But at the same time, so that we don't feel guilty, we are now going to take this other $50. We're going to put it in our sacred stash and we're going to make an investment. We're going to plant a seed that will then ultimately replenish the $50 that we use. Is this making sense? Is this making sense, family? So anytime you spend something uh, or use money for enjoyment purposes, what we're doing is if I'm going to enjoy something now, I'm also going to plant a seed that makes sure that it gets replenished in the future. So another way of thinking of that is from a tree. I'm, if I'm going to cut down this tree right now to use it for wood for my fire, I'm also going to plant seeds for more trees to come in the future. So if I'm going to go buy this Gucci bag right now for $3,000, I'm also going to be making a $3,000 investment to replenish this money that I know I will never see again in the future. Okay? So that's, that's how I want you to think when you're about to make a purchase that you know is for pure enjoyment. At this very same time, I want you to make an investment that then replaces that so that you can enjoy life in the future. Because if you only buy based on enjoyment of the in the moment, I'm only I just want to enjoy my money, then what you'll find is that you're using all of this for enjoyment, but then life in the future becomes hard. Life in the future becomes hard because you were in full enjo enjoyment in the present moment. And you didn't plant any seeds so that you can enjoy life in the future as well. Okay? So anytime we're going to consume a seed, we also want to plant a seed. Anytime we're going to consume a seed, we also want to plant a seed. Okay? So, do 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 do. Where did I say? Couch, couch, couch. Um, yes. So, therefore... To get the new couch set, you need to have $2,000 in true profit. The fun fund should have a specific financial, should have specific financial targets based on your wants. Perhaps it is a $1,000 couch set or a $3,000 vacation or a $10,000 used car. These are one-time expenses that will never come back to you. The money leaves your personal economy forever. Enjoying the fruits of your labor is okay as long as we plant seeds that will bear more fruit, fruit in the future too. Okay. So that's how I enjoy my life now without worry, without guilt, because I've planted seeds to know of equal and equivalent seeds that will reap in the future. OK. So. Step six. Now the systems uh, now that the systems of pre investing stage is set up, we want to add more revenues into the system through a secondary active stream. Number two. Doing so will help us accelerate how quickly we fill, up, fill our operating expenses in our emergency fund accounts to get in a position to start investing from our sacred stash. This revenue stream usually starts as an active income as active income too, meaning that you are still trading time for money. You want this to be something that has uh, no to low startup costs and can produce positive cash flow within 30 to 90 days. It may be working extra hours at your current job or moonlighting to make some more money at a second job. If you are more entrepreneurial, it could be a side hustle based on something you already know how to do from your job or another skill set like gardening, fixing iPhones, catering, or a side hustle where you leverage an existing platform like Uber or Airbnb. We are looking for immediate cash 
any additional way that we can bring money into the system without compromising your joy and peace will help you get to the investing stage where we can begin acquiring cash flowing assets that appreciate and generate passive income faster. Step number seven, we're on page 224. Step number seven, active stream number three may uh, develop from secondary active, uh, secondary active stream number two, where it starts as a side hustle, but it is working and worth your time. Now you want to grow a legitimate business and you are passionate about the problem you are solving and you see the economic potential of it freeing you. This requires developing your highest value skill and high quality systems. Until your systems are built, this business will still be active income where you are trading time for money. So I had the, the Hart Sogs family come on stage at Generational Wealth Conference and they run a cleaning business. They run a six figure cleaning, actually a seven figure cleaning business. And they don't pick up any brooms. They don't pick up any mops. They don't clean any bathrooms, right? Why? Because of systems. Their systems are in place. The systems are what free them, okay? In the same way I'm teaching you a system for your money, your, their systems free them. So they have a cleaning business, yet they don't clean. You can have a catering business without ever cooking. You could have an Uber business, right, without ever driving. That's because you have systems in place. Initially, it may be hard to scale beyond you because you may be the business and the brand, which means no you, no money. And that's okay in the beginning. Being an employee in a business you own and love is better than being an employee in someone else's business you hate. You heard me on that? Being an employee in a business you own and love is better than being an employee in someone else's business you hate. To make sure your business is economically viable, you want to pay yourself like a W-2 employee by sending money from your business to your cash pot bi-weekly. Starting out, it may just be a small amount, but over time, it will increase. Okay? Last paragraph on page 224. Beyond your pay and business expenses, the goal of this stream is not to profit at the moment. See, a lot of people are trying to profit in their business right away. That's not the goal. You want to reinvest every dollar of income back into the business to grow it beyond you, whether this is by hiring, delegating, outsourcing, automating, or advertising. You will find that your business can start to reduce your personal monthly living expenses too because you may be able to write off things like your home office, cell phone, and part of your car note based on them being used for your business. Consult an accountant and run as many expenses as legally possible through your business according to Section 162 of the tax code. To take advantage of this, you should incorporate the business as an LLC or S-Corp and create a separate business checking account at Accessible Bank Number 1. If you need startup funding for your business, you get to serve as your own bank and draw from your sacred stash. Investing in yourself and what you're building is typically the greatest investment you can make. When you start seeing profits in your business, you put money back into your sacred stash to make investments in other assets that will generate passive income by taking an owner's draw from the business. OK, so a lot of people, uh, we oftentimes when we have excess money, we look for assets like stocks and we look for assets like multifamily real estate, which, you know, is my favorite. But guess what, family? The greatest investment you can make is in yourself. If I would have invested all the money that I had into a stock. I would only have so much money at this moment in time. I would only, my net worth would only be at such a level. But because I invested it back into my temple, because I invested it back into my ideas that I, I, or the ideas that were divinely given to me, right? I've had a greater return. So I only look for I only look to invest in assets outside of myself, right? When I don't know another way to invest in myself. So Julian, you've already hired. You've already paid for this coaching program over here. You've already invested in this technology, okay? You still have this excess, okay? Now is when I take that excess and I put it into another piece of real estate. Now is when I take this excess and I put it into a stock. But the first asset that I invest in is actually myself. The greatest return that I've ever gotten is by investing in myself, okay? So step eight, we're on page 225. We're almost there, family. Now that the sacred stash has several streams pouring into it, we want to take all of the potential energy like a river dam and release it. The goal is not to accumulate money. It is to circulate it. How is your money going to make money if you never let it go? 
How is your money going to make money if you never let it go? You are supposed to re release money. Okay, I want you to see this word. Re-lease. Re-lease. When you have a lease on a car, the car company still owns it, though it is not physically in their possession. Oh, I hope you catch this. You are supposed to re-lease. Everybody type re-lease. I need you to see the word. Everybody type re-lease. I need you to see the word. Re-lease. Now, some of you have had a car lease before. You've leased a phone, okay? Watch this. When you have a lease on a car, who owns the car, family? The car company still owns it, though it is not physically in their possession. Some of you think that you need something in your possession to own it. No, that is not how you get the greatest return. The same is true for money. When you lease money, yes, remember, you are the bank. When you lease money, it is still yours, though it is not physically in your possession, and you know that it will eventually return to you. I happily release money every single day, okay? I don't spend it because when we spend money, we end money. But I release money. It comes back. It returns to me, and I release it again, and I release it again, and I release it again, and I release it again. As I said, you know, uh, when Puff Daddy said, you tell your friends to get with my friends and we could be friends. You tell your friends to get with my friends and we could be friends. I tell Benjamin Franklin, you tell your friends to get with my friends and then we could be friends. So every time I send Benjamin Franklin out, he better be coming back with some Hamiltons, some Lincolns, some Washingtons, and hopefully another Benjamin Franklin. Hopefully he got a twin out there that he can come back with. Okay? I'm going to release you to go get them and bring them back. You tell your friends to get with my friends and we could be friends. All right? See, you, hip hop, it, it has some nuggets in there, but we got to repurpose it a little bit. Okay. So, do you understand that even though I've released this money into an investment and it's not physically in my possession, I still own it? It's still coming back to me. Okay. At a specific date and time. At a specific date and time, especially if, I, if I've loaned money, I've loaned money for real estate development projects, I've loaned money and I know when that money is due and at what rate of return that it's coming back to me at. Okay. Other investments, I don't know a specific date or the actual return amount, but I know that that money is still mine. It's just going to come back to me in its own time, okay? So we are in the business of leasing money. Returns, you keep releasing it to the individuals and investments that have multiplied it, okay? Page 225, last paragraph. This means that we must actively be searching for the right deals at the right time. You likely have to, uh, you likely have to hook up uh, have you likely have the hookup at a retail store because a friend or family member works there where you can get discounts on expenses and liabilities. We want to get the hookup on assets and income, and those plugs usually come through relationships as well. We want to invest in assets that appreciate, generate positive cash flow, and or offer tax deductions. Assets include things like multifamily real estate, which is my favorite asset class. This is why I run the multifamily movement. Stocks, your uh, your own business, collectibles, uh, and loans that you can originate. And then we take those rents, interest payments, dividends, and capital gains and put them back into the put them back in the sacred stash while we wait for another deal. And we repeat this process over and over and over until our passive income is greater than our cost of living. If your monthly living expenses are only three thousand dollars per month and your assets generate thirty six hundred dollars per month, you are financially free. Financial freedom does not require you to have a million dollars in cash. That's what a lot of people think when they think of financial freedom. Do I want you to have a million dollars in cash? Yes, I do. I want that for you. But that's not what financial freedom is, okay? One million dollars in cash would be helpful, but it must be working for us. You can achieve financial freedom a lot faster when you focus on implementing a system designed to maximize your active income to generate passive income until you no longer have to rely on active income to live. Boom. That is it. My family, my friends, rich and righteous. That is it for the day. That is the cash flow framework. If you came in late, I'll show it to you one more time. I'm going to post an image of it in the Facebook group.
This is the cash flow framework. This is what I just walked you through. And uh, verbally, um, just hearing it verbally, it may be hard, a little bit hard to grasp. But once you see the diagram and the image, um, you'll see how money is supposed to flow. And I did my best to document exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, it's going to require you to set up several accounts. It's going to require you to set up several accounts um, in order to do it. Um, but And it could take you a month to do so. But once you do it, your money will be automated for wealth. This is exactly how my accounts are set up. And I just want you to mimic me. If I've been successful and I can model for you then and be a demonstration for you, then I'm showing you what has worked. And um, I encourage you to do the same. OK, so with that, we will continue tomorrow at 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we will be on page 227. And this this next section is powerful. It's one source with multiple streams. One source with multiple streams. We'll be reading that tomorrow. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time and you have no clue what you just stepped into, we're reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets, Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. Um, this is my book um, that I, documents my money mindset um, from a spiritual standpoint that has allowed me to create the abundance that I have in my life. Um, we meet here every uh, every weekday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we read anywhere from four to eight pages. Um, you can get the book at moneyandmanifestation.com. You'll see that pinned at the top. You can get the book at moneyandmanifestation.com. Um, uh, if you go to Amazon, uh, one book will be $100. But if you go to moneyandmanifestation.com, uh, you can get five books for $100. Okay, One is for you, four is for you to give to other people to stimulate your personal economy. You also get the rituals workbook, which you'll see is the exercises that you do at, at the end of each section. And um, and then you also get the audio book as well. Um, but this space is 100% free. I'm not asking for, I'm not sending the offering plate around uh, eight times like your minister on Sunday. Okay. I'm not sending the offering plate. Um, there is no building fund. All we need is a Zoom account. All we need is the internet. All we need is a cell phone and a laptop. And we are here. This is church, family. This is church. Whenever two or more are gathered, right? We don't need a whole mega stadium looking like it's about to be an NBA game or a Beyonce concert. We don't need all that production, okay? All we need is us being fully present, listening, uh, listening for divine downloads and being guided. All of that is excess. In fact, a lot of it is actually blocking. Some people go to church for entertainment, family. Oh, the music is good. I love the music ministry. Now, can songs touch your soul? Yeah. But how about we get to the true word? How about we get to what God is trying to communicate to us? And when I, when I see some of these ministers, they pick out one little scripture, they read the scripture, and then they go off on a personal development speech. And they add in some music in there, and some drums, and some jumping, and hooping, and hollering, and some... Huh. Yeah, they, they do all these extras. How about we just go back to the core? Okay, so that's what I'm about. And you could tell I'm showing up 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. I'm not asking for a dime. I don't need anything from you. In fact, I just want to give, 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 give. That's what the righteous do. We give. We're givers, right? If you choose to buy the book, great. If you don't, I'm still here for you, okay? I'm still here for you. So we'll be back 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Uh, today has been a blessing. <clears throat> Go check out the Facebook group. Go check out the Facebook group uh, at http www.facebook.com groups forward slash groups forward slash rich and righteous. I'm going to post the image of the uh, cash flow framework there so that you can see it. And uh, besides that, I will see you all uh, tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Set a phone alarm. I don't like to bombard you with text messages and emails. So please, if this has been of value to you, um, please set a phone alarm for 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every single weekday. All right. Much love, y'all. Peace.